Well, 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 look what we have here. A Samsung Galaxy S21. S21. Hey, I'm Jerry. And yes, this is the brand new Samsung Galaxy S21 that just arrived. We're gonna pop it open, take a look at it, get a couple of first impressions and go from there, I guess. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably wondering why in the heck does he have an Android phone? Well, honestly, since I started my channel, I have been mostly iPhone, but this is not my first Android rodeo. Actually, that sounds pretty cool. I would go see an Android rodeo for sure. But no, I've had a lot of Android phones and iPhone just happens to be what I use at the moment. I use whatever technology, whether that's Android or iOS or Mac or Windows or whatever type of smart device is best for me at the moment. And at the moment, my go-to phone is the iPhone because I like the integration that I have with the computer and with the Apple Watch and with the iPad. But there's nothing that's really preventing me from going back to Android if that's what I choose. In fact, I've had a lot of Android phones, starting with the HTC Legend that I bought back in 2011 or 2012 in Malaysia when I lived in Vietnam. And since then, I've had like the Nexus 6 and the Nexus 5 and Galaxy S9. You know, you know what? I got a list. All right, so here's all of the Android phones that I've had since about the 2011, 2012 period. I've had the HTC Legend, the Nexus 5, Nexus 6, Moto G, Galaxy S6, Nexus 6P, Galaxy S7, Google Pixel XL, Moto 5G, Pixel 2 XL, the Galaxy S9, and the Google Pixel 3. And then I went back to iPhone for the last couple years. But now, let's try this. So very simple packaging, of course, a very slim box because you know what's missing? A power adapter's missing. Yeah, they pulled an Apple. And actually, if you look at the box, it's very similar. Of course, this one's a little bit taller because the regular S21 has, I believe, a 6.2 inch screen. And this is the iPhone 12 mini, but you know what? Apple still wins on thinness of box size, but we're not here to talk about iPhone. So let's get this guy open. So this is the standard S21, which I believe is 6.2 inches, just black. And I think it's what, 128 gigabytes or something like that, whatever the base storage is. Oop, drop something there. That is worthless. All right. Oh. Look at that. This phone came with something on it. Look at that. We got debris from across the world. Inside the box, we have the phone, of course, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but it looks pretty cool. Underneath the phone, we have a SIM tool and a box with a charging cable and some documentation that nobody's ever gonna read, and that's it. Get rid of this. So this phone is roughly the same size as the regular iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro, but it does not have the squared edges like the iPhone 12 phones do. And I've seen a couple of comments in the last couple of days about people actually preferring the rounded edges to the sharp edges, even though the sharp edges look a lot better. And the sharper, flatter edges of the iPhone 12, I know we keep talking about the iPhone, but the sharper, flatter edges of the iPhone 12 make for more grippability, in my opinion. At the bottom, you got a speaker, a SIM slot, Nothing on this side, microphones, volume rocker, and the power switch or sleep switch. And I guess the second speaker is up here in the earpiece. And on the back, we have the three cameras, wide, ultra wide, and the space zoom, which I'm super excited to actually try out. All right, so let's turn this on and pull the plastic off. There we go, Samsung Galaxy. Powered by Android, in case you were wondering. So a couple things about this phone real quick. The back on this phone, the regular standard S1, so not the S1 Plus or the S1 Ultra, is plastic, which actually is fine. It keeps the cost down and it looks pretty nice. It's a nice matte black finish. And I think it looks pretty good. It's getting a little fingerprinty, but you know, whatever. Most people are gonna throw a case on it. And we'll talk about the screen more after I get it set up. But the screen is, I believe, a 1080p panel, which a lot of people are upset with that it's not at least a 1440p panel or whatever the other resolutions are. But it is a high refresh rate panel, which means just like on something like the iPad Pro, as you scroll, it should be a much cleaner, crisper view of text and other things as you're scrolling and moving around the screen. It should feel like less delay when you touch the screen or swipe or do anything on the display. And the S21 comes with a larger in-display fingerprint sensor or under-display fingerprint sensor than last year's phone, so let's set that up. It says, start scanning with the center of your fingertip. And 
I think you just slightly adjust it just like you do with other fingerprint sensors, kind of move your finger around. And keep doing that over and over until it gets enough photos of your fingerprint. Yay, I've done it. So we have the phone set up with the fingerprint sensor and I think if I just place my phone on the area that the sensor should be in, even with the display off, it should turn on. Yep, it sure did. And we can see that if we lock the screen, turn it back on, it wants the fingerprint right there. Use my finger, there we go. And if I use a different finger, of course, that should not work. Yep. All right, it's actually pretty fast, it's not bad. Now, if you get used to where the placement is, for your thumb to go, if you're pulling it out of your pocket, you should be able to pull it out and unlock it without ever seeing a lock screen. Ooh, do you see that? If I just tap the display, it seemed to unlock it really quick. How about that? All right, so that's actually pretty sweet. That's the first time I've used an in-display fingerprint sensor. And of course you can do face unlock and other things with that, I believe as well. And I'll play around with that later. But so far, that's pretty cool. And right out of the box, the display looks Amazing, actually, it looks really good. It's really clear, and as you're scrolling, that text is nice and sharp. All right, so I pulled out my iPhone so that we can take a look at this. Open up the camera app. Down at the bottom, just like on the iPhone, you have ultra wide, wide, and telephoto. So let's see how that looks. So there's the ultra wide, wide, and telephoto, which is 3X. And if we go up a little bit, you can kind of see how it's looking at the viewfinder on my other camera. And we can actually pinch to zoom and get up to 30X for space zoom. So let's see how that looks. You can see down here it says 30X and it is pretty grainy, but is it working? Yeah, it is working. And you actually have a little viewfinder up at the top right there, which helps you know what you're pointing at because it can be difficult to find if you're not pointing it in the right direction. So that's kind of nice, I like that. But I can't really test a lot sitting right here, so I'm gonna have to use it a little bit over the next couple of days to come back and give you a little bit more feedback or a little bit more of my opinions about this camera. But first off, after the unboxing, the display looks great. The fingerprint sensor is kind of cool. That's the first one that I've used. And the camera is very interesting. One other thing that I haven't touched on yet is the design. I really like the design of this S21. I prefer flat displays compared to curved displays. I think it just makes things so much easier. Things aren't distorted on the edges. And if you wanna put a glass screen protector on it or something like that, it makes it so much easier. And the back of course is plastic, but it still looks really nice. You get wireless charging, you have your three cameras, and the camera bump is very interesting. And Samsung actually made the camera bump a feature this year, a design feature, which I think is really nice. It kind of rolls into the side. And if you can remember camera bumps of years past where you know, people were offended by them or disgusted by them, or you have the 2018 iPad Pro, which had the wart camera bump. This one actually looks really good. Samsung leaned into it. They said, you know what? It has to be there. Let's make it look good. And I think they did a great job. So that's the unboxing of the S21. I haven't had a chance to get into the software yet. Over time, I will do that and I'll get back to you guys with my impressions. But this is a brand new phone. Yes, it's plastic on the back, but it's an expensive phone still at $799. It's got the Snapdragon 888 processor. It's got a big glass screen. It looks beautiful. You wanna keep it beautiful, right? Well, to do that, you're gonna need a case. So ESR Gear actually sent me over a couple of cases to check out. We have their clear case for the S21, which is a silicone case, and the phone just snaps right in there, of course, like any other case. It looks really good. It shows off the design of your new S21. So maybe you got the purple one, maybe you got the other colors and you wanna show that off. The clear case from ESR Gear is the perfect way to do that. It doesn't hide the camera bump. It doesn't hide the aesthetic of the phone. So you still get to see and admire the beauty of your new device. One of the most important things to me in a case is the button clickiness. And these ESR cases have nice, clicky buttons. You know when you're pushing it, it's not a mistake. You don't think you pushed it and you didn't actually do it. It's not spongy. It feels really great. And that beautiful camera bump that we talked about a few minutes ago is perfectly protected. There's a lip that surrounds it. So when the case sits on a surface, it's not going to get scratched in any way. So your cameras are protected. Now, of course, ESR Gear also has a number of other cases, including this kickstand case. 
So if you're going to be consuming a lot of media on your S21, then this kickstand is a great option. Just like the clear case, it's going to protect the camera bump. It's going to give you clicky buttons, but you do get this kickstand so you can set your phone up. So let me show you how that works. And of course, installing it could not be simpler. The buttons are nice and clicky and you got your kickstand. So you can set your phone up and watch YouTube. Maybe something like youtube.com slash Jerry Schultz. I don't know, you know, just throwing something out there. But while you're there, maybe hit the subscribe button. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I really want a kickstand case, but I still want to show off the beauty of the new S21 and you want a clear case, good news is ESR Gear has a clear kickstand case. And even better than that, you can actually check these out in the links below and use code JERRY2021 for 20% off your ESR Gear cases for your new Galaxy S21. So that's it for the unboxing of this Samsung Galaxy S21 phone. What questions do you have about it? What would you like to see in the review? What would you like me to compare it against? Let me know below. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe to see the next video on the S21 and I'll see you next time.